Hi everyone, my name is Gary Schrinder. I'm a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft. And in today, we're going to talk about how I integrated DALI 2, uh, which is the open AI uh, uh, image generation model. Um, so this was the thing that everyone was talking about before ChatGPT came along, uh, you know, the ability to just put text in and, and get some images back. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be great if we actually had that in Teams and how would that look um, as a bot? So using Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code, I went about creating this. Um, and the result is a sample, which you can see in front of you. So I'm going to run through this uh, as a demo, first of all, and show you how it's working. And then we'll jump into the code, and I'll show you all the individual uh, bits and pieces, a few tips and tricks as well, uh, some things that um, that I added in there as, as I was uh, building, um, just, to, just to help my own development. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll go through that. So first, let's look at the demo. So I have this bot that I've created. Uh, I've got my test user, uh, Nesta, and in the app catalog, I have created my app. And I've published it out so that anyone in this tenant can use it. So I'm going to install it. So uh, Nesta is going to install the app. So we'll just add that. And it's it's a personal app, so it's, it's going to appear on, on the side there, really nice and accessible. And um, one thing it's got, it's got a nice onboarding process. So as soon as Nesta has installed the bot, it's gone, great, I know you've just installed this. I'm going to give you some help. Um, so I'm going to show you some information as to what you can use this bot for, um, and also the commands that you can use as well to um, uh, to use it and also configuration steps. So one of the things that I wanted to do in this bot was actually to have personal preferences. What happens if you had a bot that you wanted to change depending on you know, what your preferences were or to actually provide an API key? Um, so with uh, the OpenAI um, APIs, you have to get an, an API key for, for use. You get like free trial. Um, you can click this button and get a free API key. So I'll just open that up. It's going to just go to OpenAI, a open just a nice uh, URL launcher. You can log in and you get, get your own key. Come back and provide your own key. So we've got an adaptive card here with, oh, where's my key? <laughs> okay, just gonna have to quickly go get a key. <laughs> In fact, rather than not do that, I'll just show the video as a fallback. I recorded a video. This is always good just in situations like this. So we'll see that the bot is added. And we've got that onboarding message and we can do the configuration. Paste in your API key, change results, change the image sizes that you want, and then ask the bot for some text. And it goes away and it generates a number of images based on that description. And then you click on the actual image and it opens up a dialog and you've got the image. Nice and easy, but really configurable. Let's look at the actual code here. So here we have my uh, project uh, in Visual Studio Code. So this was created using uh, Teams Toolkit. So I've got that already installed. And I went through the create a new app process, create a new app, and I chose Workflow Bot as my, uh, my, my starting point. And I chose that mainly because I have uh, commands in my bot, and I also have responses as well. So I want to you know, get information from, from the user. I want to display back uh, what they've, they've, uh, they've sent through to, to the bot and also store some information in in the background and why use tool teams toolkit in the first place well it does a ton of work just to get started so one of the great things about teams toolkit is as soon as i hit f5 it went away and created my azure ad app registrations my bot favorite registrations uh, it provided me with templates as well for um, deploying to azure later on uh, which i actually did as well so teams toolkit really gets you up and running very very quickly with a bot um, and we can see if I go to the initialize uh, file here here is um, what teams toolkit gives me it uses uh, the teams FX library which uh, which is uh, 
really there to simplify um, the uh, authentication and setup of the bot, but also provide an easy way to create commands uh, like the surprise command and the settings uh, command in here, but also card actions uh, like the uh, the settings save handler. So when I click that button, I had a handler there to go, okay, yep, something's happened, and I need to uh, I need to to save that information so that my uh, my commands that I used further down the line that actually generated the uh, the images and, and called the uh, OpenAI service, um, that I could get the API key from a previous um, previous part of the conversation that that uh, that the user had had with the bot. So here is uh, kind of like the Teams FX side of the bot, if you like. Um, now, one of the things that I want to start with is how did I uh, implement the, uh, the welcome uh, message? Well, one of the things that um, the uh, Teams FX uh, library, it doesn't do everything. Sometimes we want to fall back to uh, bot framework and use some of that functionality. And the way that we can do the, uh, the welcome message is by creating a Teams activity handler. Uh, now, this activity handler is specific to uh, bots that are run in Teams. So essentially, it gives you um, it gives you methods that you can override to say, okay, uh, the bot's just been installed. Uh, run this, uh, run, run this bit of code, um, or later on, which I'll show you about the uh, how do we handle the um, the pop up, the uh, the dialog um, window uh, when when we click on the adaptive card. So. When we have that welcome message, this uh, this code is fired here, which essentially just sends uh, the uh, the message of, of hi there, and it renders an adaptive card called uh, called welcome card. And if we see in this welcome card, um, it's pretty standard ad adaptive card. It, it's got the information in there for the uh, for the commands, but right down at the bottom, it has an action, which has a, a verb when we uh, when we actually execute. Uh, that card, we click on the button. Uh, it sends a verb to uh, to the to the bot um, that's called welcome uh, config. And what that uh, what that does is then I've got a handler here, which essentially then um, runs because it's it's it matches that uh, that verb and renders the settings card as well. There's a couple of things here where it's doing. It's trying to grab things from state. I'll cover that uh, in a minute. Um, but essentially, this is then how we can kind of cascade um, one action to another uh, through using these these trigger verbs. So the settings card here is uh, is is rendered. We can show that again as well, where we've got please enter your API key, and we have the 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 style there, the password style, so that the key was was masked, and the different options for uh, the. Uh, number of images that we want and also the size of them. And again, we've got some verbs here for settings save and settings uh, cancel. Um, so again, these are these are action handlers. So in here, we can re we can obtain the information that was submitted through that adaptive card through actions data. So we can take the API key uh, and, and, and the size um, as well. Um, and we can set all these values uh, into, into state. We can also return um, the kind of like the summary information. So if you remember when we uh, hit the save button, the card got the settings card got replaced, and the actual information that we submitted in um, was 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 put put in place of of that card. Nice way of kind of reinforcing that um, confirmation that it's been submitted. So the activity handler. In, if we go into the index.ts, um, here we've got a web server where uh, this is again generated by uh, Teams Toolkit, where we've got an, uh, a, a message handler that handles messages sent between our our bot running in Teams and the and the, the bot framework. And what we can do here is we can run alongside uh, the Teams FX bot that's created for us, we can run our activity handler as well. So every time something happens, we've also got our activity handler running. And these all um, work together. The second part is state um, that I want to talk about in here. So by default, 
when you're using team, uh, Teams Toolkit with, with a bot, everything's stored in memory. So if you save a file, your memory will get reset, which is not great when you're dealing with state in a, uh, in a bot. So one of the things which I did do is install the Azure Blobs um, package and actually set this up so it was using a local instance of, uh, of Azure Storage. And we can configure uh, a new storage instance here we can set up state this is uh, pretty standard in uh, in bot framework and we can create uh, state accesses where we can save things like the api key results and and sizes settings things like that so that we can actually push things into uh, in, into state as as we are going along one thing which I know a lot of people have, have said is Teams Toolkit does a lot of things. We don't know what it's doing. I'd like to add my own uh, services in here. One of the things that, that I did also do was to uh, actually start a, a service. Um, so because I'm using a local um, uh, running instance of uh, Azure Storage to, to hold my uh, conversation state, I wanted to have um, the Azureite service um, running when I did an F5 and actually launched my uh, my bot. So I installed that package, which uh, basically creates you know a, a, a local service uh, running on my machine. So it's like I'm I'm working with a, a real Azure Storage um, that's provisioned in the cloud. Um, I can actually extend the the build chain here and and and, and actually reuse a lot of the the work that Teams Toolkit has has done for me. Um, so that is a really helpful tip. If you uh, if if you know if you want to extend that that build chain, then you can do by coming into uh, into this task uh, dot, dot JSON. Now let's take a look at the actual commands. The w one command that we actually ran was uh, the surprise command. So when I put in surprise. We've got a handler here that's looking for that word. And what, what it's doing is it's actually going away and it's finding the, the API key that we've put in state. It's actually checking, see you know, whether I have or not. If I'd skip that, that stage, it would actually go and you know, actually present your, your API key and go back and use the settings command to, uh, uh, to, to, to add that value in. And, and what it's doing is sending some messages back. It's getting a random idea from a random list uh, that I've got here that's from the OpenAI uh, website. And then it's calling this generate image uh, function here. And in here is where the OpenAI stuff takes over in the the OpenAI service has SDKs, um, so you can install the OpenAI package. So this one's for Node.js, where you can create a client um, that you can then use to uh, to send a request off to the OpenAI service, passing your API key, the prompt, how many images you want, and so on, and get a response back of, of images that then you can render in, um, uh, in, in your results. So there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of checking to make sure I've got API keys and things, and I've actually got um, the, uh, the, the right um, preferences as well, such as, uh, like I say, the number of images and the size. And we send the request across to OpenAI. We get a response, and we simply render that in an adaptive card. So let's look at that adaptive card. So in here, it's it's actually a loop. So it uses the the data expression to loop through all of the results and uh, create an image with an, an action button. Now every time, uh, so when when the uh, the image is actually clicked, it executes this this task fetch uh, activity, and it passes the URL to the actual image and also the prompt, so the text that we actually passed in to, uh, to generate the the image. Now, if I go back to my activity handler, we have a, another function in here called handle teams task module fetch. And this is triggered and it returns a response to open a task module, that, that dialogue, and it returns just a URL. Um, so it's actually a URL to a HTML page that, that I have in my solution. And it passes the URL and, and the prompt values through as just query string uh, parameters. And in here, I can show you the HTML page. It's really, really basic. It's literally just getting the URL, and it's updating the uh, the attributes on an, an image tag to display that image uh, in the uh, in in the task module. And then when it's closed, is the matter. We don't need to capture that uh, that actual um, uh, event uh, coming coming back.
One thing to just kind of note as well, as I'm uh, rapidly running out of time, <laughs> um, is I use Teams Toolkit to get this uh, project actually running in Azure as well. And I mentioned at the beginning that it provides uh, the uh, the templates, and this was really really useful because you know from from my point of view, the defaults there were, were enough. The web server that it was using, um, all of the bot service, all of the identity I didn't need to touch, but I did add my storage. So I wanted that when this uh, actually was running in, in Azure, that I had Azure storage there, just like I was using locally in, in my development. So I added a bicep file. And this just describes the, the storage account that would get provisioned. I updated the uh, this provision dot uh, bicep file, uh, which is kind of like the the main entry point that, that says, um, you know, when you when Teams Toolkit looks at this file, it's going to look at all the resources that it needs to to actually provision for 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 this uh, project to work, um, and update the. Azure parameters as, as well in here, so I could actually parameterize all the different resources um, that uh, that was being generated as well. And it was made really easy because you've got different options down here. You've got provision in the cloud, so that will go away. It will run the bicep files. It will um, basically provision all of the res resources. And then we've got deploy to cloud that after we've done the provisioning, this will actually package up and deploy the code um, and deploy that to, to the web server and also the, uh, um, the any environment variables that, that I'll have used. And then finally, we've got published to Teams, which basically published the app into our organization uh, catalog. Um, and then I could basically use any user in my tenant to, uh, to, to use that, that bot. Um, and with that, I'm going to finish. Um, so hopefully you've seen how you know how you can build bots like this uh, using Teams Toolkit. Um, I'm going to put the links in the in the chat, and we'll, uh, it'll be in the uh, in the video description as as well, so you can take a look at the repository and try it out for yourself. Faisa, back to you. Excellent, really, really cool stuff. Thank you for the clarification how it's being built and all of the features which we have in the Teams Toolkit as well. Mm -hmm.